Hello, everybody. This is Andy Lopez. I'm having a wonderful day today. So basically, essentially what's happening is that somehow, uh, let, let me do this. I'm missing the, okay. Somehow I'm missing, uh, my computer screwed up on me and somehow I recorded it one way, but it actually sounds another way. The sound is the key word here because what's happening is that the sound just didn't get recorded and it's too late to redo the whole thing and it won't go in the other operation. So here we are without the sound, which works really good as long as, uh, as long as you can hear me. Audio is there very quiet. Uh, I, that's what the engineer says. The audio is there but very quiet, but I don't really hear anything because I have it out really loud. Everything's like super loud here and all this stuff. So, uh, but is it working okay? Can you see that uh, everything's fine? Is my voice okay? Okay, right. So the audio is uh, it's just not working at all right now. So we're just going to cruise through it. You know how the show must go on. Uh, Zoom meeting, click on, you know, there are several ways to call to get to get in touch with me. But the easiest way is to go to the website, thisfulgarder.com, click, click on radio show, click on live when it's live. You'll click on live, it'll take you to the station. It'll say Zoom meeting, join with Zoom meeting, click here. Uh, we're gonna get, a, we're still gonna get a uh, another person calling. Uh, 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 Jacob, are you there? Uh, are you there, yeah, Jacob? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, okay, Jacob, so I'm having technical difficulties today. That's what happens when your people call me all the time. I'm just one single man here. I can't do all this. I'm gonna kill myself right now, give me my gun. Sorry, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm going to freak out any moment now. Anyway, so Jacob, um, <laughs> welcome to the show. I was doing so good. I had like 100% zero errors. And you came on and you ruined my show. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, that's that's what happens. You ruined my show, Jacob. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm like, Okay, people are looking, listening going, my God, this guy is like, somebody give him some... What is it they take? What do, what do people take when they freak out? <laughs> Just answer my question. <laughs> I, I don't know what they take when they Just freak out. answer my garden question. <laughs> Just answer your garden. Well, your garden question wasn't even supposed to come up yet because your picture is right of your garden question. It happens, I put it at the, at the time where you were supposed to call, which is 115. But go ahead and ask me, ask me your gardening question anyway. So here's some, you didn't send me, I only got one question from you. You said you were going to send me more pictures and questions, but I didn't get it. Yeah, I, I didn't get around to developing those in time. Um, ah, 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 ah. So, I, uh, so your pictures should show up sooner or later <laughs> in here. Uh, that's, a, that's the thing I'm trying to learn to do is how to mix uh, live shows with not live shows. Right now, technically, this is, a live show, but we just have some video, some people can, who are watching the video. You, can you see the video? Yeah. Right. So most people are only listening to it. They don't care. What's on? If you're a video person, you get to see the, the good stuff, right? So well, they got to see, they got to see the video. I know. I know. That's it's like going to the movie and sitting in the closet, listening to the movie, right? It's like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyway, you, you're, so go ahead. So you're in Carpentry era. Uh, and you you asked me about you sent me some pictures of your manure the uh, horse manure has been sitting around for a long time. You want to know if you can still use them? Yeah. So the question I have is there's this huge uh, pile of aged horse manure, very dried out, and um, some of the stuff on the bottom has been decomposing for so long that it's now just like this kind of like fine gritty uh, substance. And um, I just wanted to hear what you had to, to say about uh, using it and how to maybe like um, mix something with it. So okay, well, here's the, here's the thing. It's actually toxic now. Because oh, as, really? as it dries, it becomes more salty, more concentrated in whatever, you know, the salt, the, the, the minerals are. So it's very, very strong, uh, probably be very alkaline. Uh, so, and all the living things are gone. But it can be, because you know the minerals and those things and the salt, all those things are actually good in the right proportions. But you can recompost it, add it back into the compost system a little bit at a time, because it makes a good amendment. But I just there's nothing there other than the actual you know minerals and it depending if it has minerals, if it has salt, you know if it's a horse manure. Horses are sometimes given salt 
licks. Usually the, the cattle are the ones that get the most in Salt Lake, but sometimes horse owners do give them. Uh oh, <laughs> hang on, look, a video came out. <laughs> I, know, I, I know what happened now. I didn't finish the show. I, I, I kept getting calls from people and they wouldn't let me finish the show. I, so I didn't get to actually, you know, do it. <laughs> I finished it. I, it's just at the very, like, Oh, never mind. So uh, uh, there are lots of stuff missing, and it wasn't completely done. But so I apologize to that. I I can't. You know, it takes me a, a week to do this, get this show done. Anyway, so what it is is that uh, what I would do is I would actually start the process of uh, moving it closer to your compost setup and slowly adding it to what you're normally making compost with. You add a small amount of that to the mix. Not, in other words, don't use a straight because that's not a good idea. It's very probably too uh, too strong and whatever salts are there, too strong, whatever minerals are there. But if I had that source there available to me and I was making compost, I would uh, start, first thing I would do is move it. You know, uh, if you can get closer to you know to where you're working from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. In, in the process of moving it, I would actually add some rock dust to it. I would actually add some microbes to it in the process of moving it, because you know, you're mixing it up already, might as well mix it up. And then, and then in the process of moving, I would actually start to blend it, rather than move it and do it again, I would actually do the process of blending some other stuff with it. In other words, you can get some fresh animal manure where it is, you can get some other soil, some grass clippings, a bunch of stuff, layer it all together and make a new pile with that mixture in it. Okay. You see what I mean? You don't use it all, like I would probably use like, not, uh, half and half is too much, right? Half of the other stuff or the other stuff is too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe twenty five percent would be good. Ten percent would be good. Uh, you know, if you had the money to throw away, you can <laughs> you can get, get your soil tested. It would tell you uh, the, the, how strong they are. They would say you have too much of this, too much of that. Their salt level is way too high. So I, I would know, tell. You, go ahead. It's like thousands of dollars they charge. No, 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 no. I do the soil testing. It would probably be like seventy nine bucks. Oh, that's it, and they give you mineral readings. Uh, I can do. I do. I work with a lab test, so it's like uh, the we're not going to do all the microbes because there's no microbes in there. But you would basically want a, a basic test, so you don't have to say anything. You just send it in, and they'll send it back. Oh my God, you can't grow in this. The salt level too high. This is too high. The pH level is there, and you have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But that's all we want to know is what the pH. And I can pretty much tell you all this stuff to save you the trouble, the money, you know, because basically the pH is going to be really high. Uh, the salt levels are going to be up through the roof and whatever other mineral levels are going to be through the roof. No, you can't grow right straight in it. But so we know that. And so, and one of the, one of the good things about it, right, is that if they use any type of uh, hormones or anything like that, they injected, you know, medicine that they gave to the, uh, the horses, that's gone by now. Okay. Okay, that's gone by now. That got destroyed a long, long time ago, okay? So your biggest concern is not to uh, use it too strong because then it'll be too toxic because, you know, trace minerals and all the stuff is supposed to be, you know, when it dries out, it's actually concentrated. You'll find that the salt levels are what's going to be the strongest thing. It's going to be really, really super concentrated because, you know, it's dried, right? Yeah. Like you take the ocean stuff from the ocean, you dry, you're going to have a lot of salt, right? That's right. Right, so, th so that would be the biggest thing. I would use it. The other only reason why I would send it off would be to see just what minerals would have. You know, and you can tell that minerals in the sense of, you can always say, well, what do you, you know, do you ever talk to the people? That, remember I, I asked you about, did you talk to them? Yeah, I haven't the, been able to get a hold of the lady. By yet. the way, uh, that's the race bed I, I just finished making. I know, that's pretty beautiful. Uh, beautiful. I, the lady is, has a $40,000 greenhouse. Well, she has a raised bed inside, and now that's classic. I said, "Don't. What did you want to grow inside? What do you want a raised bed inside a forty thousand dollar greenhouse? Well, I, don't, I want a big raised bed. Okay, and there she has a giant raised bed in, in in there. But listen, so the only reason why I would do it, we just see, you know, what minerals in, and even then, I wouldn't do it that way. I would talk to the people. I said, "Well, what are you feeding your animals? If you don't mind me asking, what are you feeding well, they, your I, animals? I, I see what they feed them. They just feed them uh, some hay." Right, like, well, where are they going to get their minerals from hay? I so it, don't know. That'll, that'll tell you right off the bat that, you know, the no, it's not going to be, unless, you know, uh, the, the, they probably run free on a, on a pasture somewhere, right? No, they're in a cage. Right, so they're, they're, they're being fed something. So I, just fed hay is not animal, it's not food for the horse. 
They feed them like it's like this long, grassy looking substance. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, well, I would, you know, because, you know, the, the, the people feed their horses other things other than hay. They, they need to get like a diet of, of different types of food. So I would find out what is it you're feeding your animals because that kind of tell you what food they're going to get, right? What, yeah. minerals, what minerals they have in their, that the, their poop is going to have, right? Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? See mm -hmm. what I mean? And yeah. at the same time, we'll say, are you spraying the horse, the horse manure with any type of pesticide for fly control? No, no, like they, don't, I don't, they don't do that. I know that. I don't, you, I've you, never seen them spray. I've never. Yeah, you talk to them. Yeah, you talk to them, yeah. And, you know, so you just find out a little history of it because that's the key to, uh, if the animals were running around eating stuff and the, and the, and the property was organic, you know, and they took, because, you know, the, the ideal scenario is you have a field, right? And you take care of the field organically. In other words, you feed and you take care of that field. You, and I see if it's your garden. You feed it really well so that the plants are really healthy and nutritionally rich. So the horse, can, when they eat it, they're going to get all the nutrition they need. And their poop will be nutritionally rich too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's the key. So that kind of farm, you have a farm and you feed your animals well. And then when you kill them and do whatever it is with them, right? They, they, they're giving it back to you. But if you don't feed them, if they're like it's just sitting there inside the horse bin and they're being sold and they're not really fed, it doesn't really make sense because, you know, the horse has to be taken care of, right? They need to eat. I yeah, don't, they, I yeah. don't have a, a horse, so I don't know exactly all the different things, but when I was at this lady's place, she was getting alfalfa, she was getting all kinds of greens. She, she was growing greens. I think she calls it fodder, fodder? Yeah, right? fodder, fodder. Right. Which, which you, something you give to the horse. And in the, the, all her greens, she was growing organically. Sunflower, sprouts, all kinds. She was growing them organically. As She wanted me to grow as rich, as healthy as possible, right? And that's where they were getting their, their minerals and stuff from. They were all, she, was, they was also, she was also giving them vitamins and minerals. Oh, that's fantastic. See what I mean? So the manure was like, yeah, wonderful. Otherwise, they're not going to get it. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, if you had an expensive horse, you would think, well, gee, they're going to feed it really, really well, aren't they, right? Yeah. So that's what I would find out, you know, just to make sure that, because if they are, then you know the animal has the manure, the rich manure. If they don't, then you go, well, I'm going to have to add. Normally what I do, is I, 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 I'm I, surprised that, they, you know, I'm usually surprised that people are, you know, they don't feed, you, know, you don't feed yourself all the trace minerals you need, and you very rarely feed all the animals all the trace minerals. So you, so you know you're going to have trace minerals deficiency. And usually it's in the exotic trace minerals. So you, you want to go ahead and do the rock dust thing anyway. Yeah. See what I'm saying, right? So there's no point in saying, well, I need to look at what these animal manure has in terms of value. I'm just going to assume that they're, they're going to be missing some of these exotic stuff, exotic stuff. And I'm going to give it to them to make sure they have it because you can, can never have, I was going to say you can never have too much, but the point is, yeah, you can't have too much. They usually don't have hardly any. That's where the, the that's the key to when you know, when I talk to people, you haven't been listened to often, and I'm really disappointed in that. I'm so so sad about you. This is the first time you actually participated in the show, and I'm I'm in shock. But anyway, so the thing is, is that <laughs> I talk all the time about the soil. Where is um, uh, let's see, uh, how can I see you? I don't even see myself. You want me to see, uh, you want to, oh, there, there you oh, go. Oh, you are, and how, how do I, uh, oh, there I am. How'd you do that? Start video. Well, like, this was a start video? Start, yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, I'm naked. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe I'll stand up. <laughs> I think I'll stand up. Oh, oh yeah, look at this, breasts. Oh, hey, where am I? Oh, where am I? God. Oh, oh, no, you God. can't look at me. Don't look at me. We're on the air. <laughs> Don't look at me. Okay, wait. I can't do anything. That's it. I'll get rid of you. No, I got rid of me. Am I rid of? Can you see me anymore? I'm going to turn my video off. <laughs> turn your video off. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stop video. Okay. So, uh, so the, so you, you so the thing is to slowly use your stuff. You have a lot there that's really cool. Uh, I would probably you know move it closer in the process of moving it over. Go ahead and and uh, re uh, you know bring everything back in so you know it has it. You want to add the rock dust, but you also want to have you know make sure you have a, a couple of different sources of some type of animal manure, which you do right. 
Um, that's actually the only source right now. I'm trying to get a hold of these guys down the road for H, but their site, because they're, they're goats that are living there and we can use their manure, but their site where they have all the contacts. Hey, hey here's your, your picture. Yeah, that's, that's the pile. Yeah. You see, it's real dried out. Yeah, it's been, it's been there like a long time. Yeah, super long. Normally, you want to, you want to, you know, the ideal way to use animal manure is to I will almost get it fresh. Uh, when I lived in Florida, I worked for I, I worked I I did the Barnum and Bailey uh, circus only because they called me and they says you know we have uh, we have a a deer problem and uh, basically the deer were being were being born uh, uh, malformed the deers were having babies who were being born malformed right. And the reason why they're being born that way is because they're being fed. They were put out to pasture, but the pasture was fed with weed and feed. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay. They have the chemical fertilizer with the, with the weed control in it. Oh, that's gross. Right. So when the deers ate it, of course they have malformed children. Yeah. Oh, right? that's horrible. That's, that's absolutely horrible. Right, right. So then they, so they contact. This is very bad stuff. This stuff so is that, really, yeah, that's that's what the manure looks like underneath. Yeah, like that's a whole yeah. hole, and then yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. It's like you know the only thing you can really do with this is add it to your compost. But so what happened was is that I showed them because they were spending seventy five thousand dollars a year to haul all their animal manure away, and they were spending another seventy five to eighty thousand to hundred thousand a year to fertilize it to buy fertilizer and stuff. So I said, so why, you know, so I showed them how to make compost. They, they stopped the, with the weed and feed. They started to make compost and rock dust. You know, I was afraid, I, I, I would be a millionaire now because you know what I taught them to do? Guess. Well, um, Sudo. You ever seen Sudo? Have you ever been to the zoo and they say it's Sudo? I have no idea what you're talking about. Zoo, Z O O. Yeah, I know the zoo. D O O. Sudo. So you take poop from the zoo? Okay, so here's why. Here's, so I, 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 I showed them how to make compost because they have all kinds of animal, animals over there. I showed them how to add rock to us and make a good product that they, take, they, they then turn around and add it to their property. They reduce their fur. They start using organic fertilizer because the compost is organic fertilizer by itself, but you don't mix the two. So one of the things that and I said is you should bag the stuff and sell it and sell it at Zoo Do. Zoo Do. See, but I should have said that's my. I'm going to copyright Sudo, and that's my idea because now all the major zoos in the United States. Guess what they do? They sell Zudu. Oh, that's brilliant. I know it's not it's not great because I should have, I should be getting a commission on that thing. But you get all these rare uh, species manure. Yeah, and the only thing is that with the manure is that you don't use any kind of a carnivorous manure. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, so you don't use lions and tigers and bears, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. my, right? You don't use those, you know, and you, and you know why, right? Well, yeah, because it's got the bones and it's got the remnants of the flesh in the in the poop. Mm, no, you don't use that. make another guess. Well, yeah, uh, but, but that's the, the poop does not have the remnants. The poop don't put lions and tigers and bears don't poop out bones. I'm sorry. Too acidic. It's too acidic because they they have high powered digestive systems. Uh, you get one more chance, and then I'm going to kick you out. Um, think, think slowly. Think before you speak, grasshopper. <laughs> Come on, you got one last chance. Try it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Um, why don't we use carnivorous animals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, dun, 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 we want to keep the, 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 the shakti. We're going to keep the shakti as non-violent as possible. Dun, 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 Is that dun, 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 dun. it? No, because parasites. Oh, parasites will, the poop. More likely yeah, carnivorous. And, and you will not be able to get rid of it in the compost unless you set fire to the compost. Wow. Okay, so the parasite will survive the 210 degree heat composting, and you you probably get it into your body through various different ways. You don't actually even have to eat it. The parasite, just stick your hand in it or happen to walk on it. It goes into your skin. See? Yeah, you need to do a parasite cleanse. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you need to not use the, uh, 
<laughs> carnivorous manure, that would be that. that yeah, but better still, way. still, I gotta do the parasite cleanse, man. Yeah, know. yeah, well, then you know what the best parasite cleanse is? The easiest way to get rid of parasites in your body? How's that? Food grade diatomaceous earth. Are you serious? Serious. So the, the food it's grade serious. diatomaceous, they have three different types of diatomaceous earth pool grade, garden grade, and food grade. The pool grade is, a, so uh, when I gave a talk at the, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, it's called Nitron Company, you should, which you should know about because Nitron is one of the products you should be using, which I use in, make, in making soups with seaweed, but Nitron Company, they also sell rock tests and a bunch of other really good products. But uh, So when I gave a talk there, I, I first I found out that they sell a product called Permagard, which is the best night diatomaceous earth on the planet. And I met the guy who uh, manufactures it, and he says, we have three different types of, of uh, diatomaceous earths. We have the, the pool grade variety, which they add chemicals to it. Your chemicals companies use pool grade for the pool, but you add chemicals to it, and not, not for human use. But that's the cheapest variety. It's a mine. So they have three different kinds. So they mine this cheap variety, and then they, have, they mine a little better variety. The crystals look a little different under the microscope, which is a garden grade variety. And then in the same place, they also have a better quality of the diatomaceous earth, which looks entirely different under a microscope, which is a food grade variety. See, right? And you consume that to, to kill the, the The food grade variety is called food grade because, yeah, you give it to, you eat it yourself, you give it to your pets. Oh, anybody with horses, they give it to their horses. Anybody with animals, you give it to their, to their animals, a certain amount. It will not, not only get rid of parasites, you know, worms and stuff like that, but it controls the flies in the manure. Wow. So you can control the flies in the manure. So uh, like, for example, Arbico, that place I told you about, uh, it's called Arbico. Uh, no, it, it, no, excuse me. Agri Arbico is where I get another product. A-R-B-I-C-O. They, they sell Ultra, which is a really good ensign product. I met the same guy in Fairville, Arkansas. When I get, I used to go to the, the workshop to have an organic gardening workshop. But uh, uh, but I agrigro. No, Ar Arbico is the place that uh, Sheree runs. It's a basically a, a biological place, but they also sell uh, diatomaceous earths and they also sell um, a variety of other you know the nitro, but. Uh, and the nitron cells, they also sell the diatomaceous cells. It's called permagar, but it's the best one. It's for, for eating. You can see the difference under a microscope, and you give it to your pets. And so that would be the easiest way to deworm yourself. You just take a tablespoon on a regular basis. It'll kill any worm in, in your gut, any worms in your body, because at, at diatomaceous cells, they can't eat it. See, they eat it and choose it up. It, it destroys their little bodies. Wow. Good yeah. Yeah, I should send you a bill for this. Uh, no, thanks. You sure? You're, 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 I'm you're, sure. You're... I'm sure. <laughs> so, so, so you got, so basically, did that, did that help you a little bit? You said you have fruit trees that could use fertilization. Yeah, there's lots of them. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's just, so basically the situation is this. Um, there's like a corridor behind the horse stable that is like up on kind of like a mound it's like a so basically what happened is like the two properties basically mounded all of the topsoil together and created a little hill and on that hill um are where the fruit trees have been planted and they're, they're like you know ranging probably from like each one's probably about like five to ten years old ten years old and uh, a lot of them produce pretty good fruit there's a good variety of trees, but the area has been really unkept for the past however long, I'm not even sure, probably years. And so there's just all this wild growth all around it. The trees have never been pruned. Um, and so right now what I'm doing is I'm just clearing out all of like this brush and other things that have just kind of accumulated there. And while I do that, I want to, feed the trees something nutritious to, to well, you know. Here's some, here's some things you can do. So what you want to do is something like sustainable, right? You want to do something that just continues on, eventually continues on its own, right? Yeah, absolutely. In other words, you, you could walk away and come back in a year and everything would be just doing even better than when you were there, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sustainability basically means, for starters, putting something in the ground that will grow there that will help the soil. 
yeah, so some like clover or nitrogen fixing. Right, so there are lots of different things you can plant in the ground that will, that are native, that will help the soil con control the water and hold the, hold the soil. Uh, that's one of the things I was doing over at this lady's farm, because basically I started growing ground covers all over the place, a variety of different types of ground covers that would reseed themselves over and over and over again and replenish the soil, replenish the, the, the humans in the soil, the root systems would go down, you know, there's all these things. So they're basically ground covers that you want to grow. You want to grow native, native ground covers. Like some of it is edible, some of it is not edible, but it doesn't have to be edible. But basically, and you can look it up. I'm more happy to, you know, like, uh, see, that's one of the reasons why I tell people, if you have a question for me, tell me in advance, because then I can have things ready for you. Because I wrote, I wrote a column on that a while back, and I can look it up. I, I basically did a little bit of research in a bunch of different places. But if you type ground cover, native ground cover, in the searches, mm -hmm. you're going to get tons of stuff from all different kinds of legumes that will grow like crazy, from all different types of wild plants that grows like crazy, you know. Uh, uh, and they, and they, they die and reseed, die and reseed, die and reseed. See what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and so are they getting? Is the fruit trees getting watered? Well, that's the crazy thing, Andy. Is that so far as we can tell, they're hardly ever getting watered. Um, I did. There is a drip system that's hooked up to it, but I've never seen it on. Um, and I see that sometimes the the gardeners who who also take care of the horses, they'll like give the guava tree a bath, and then so it'll get it'll get a little water that way, but um i don't really see much watering going on so i think that they may have access like an underwater or underground uh reservoir of some kind uh, well more than likely they are getting water it's just not really seeing it when it gets done you know because it's not it's like the the, the, the gardeners there they probably water but you don't have to water a, a, a fruit trees only need water maybe once a week it depends upon a lot of it really depends on that mount. When they made the mount, it's probably soft enough for the root system to go on down, you know, deeper than it normally would be sitting on a really hard surface. So it's probably, like you said, it might be some source of water underneath there. But at the same time, you do want to water. You want to check out the drip system. Uh, and then if it's, if it's working, try to test it, get it to work. Because realistically, you can get away with it. Uh, you know, when, if you have a good ground cover growing and a, 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 a my, small amount of water, uh, that's all you really need uh, in the long run. And that would be, that would take care of, like, for example, the rock dust can be applied really easily. Uh, and there are some type of organic fertilizers that you can use. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit there, because I was sweetening everything up. But the real key is the compost. So the real key is to, you know, for example, if you was to take that horse manure and dump it over there, you'd probably kill them. But if you was to blend and make some compost and then take the compost out there and and Frequently lightly, so you're actually feeding that ground cover. That's because the ground cover will like the ground cover. Uh, it will like the uh, the compost and lots of things you could grow. They're really very interesting that you never would think about growing. That would actually be very good for the property. You know, for the for the soil. You know, so that's like that. For example, that's different types of uh, rock dust right there. See, in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the video, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things you want to you want to do is get a blend of rock dust. So you have a blend of minerals slowly apply the rock, rock dust on a slow basis but you want to start the process of, uh, of providing something to grow there but you, what you really need to do is start some type of composting process so start applying compost on a little bit uh, slowly on a regular basis to these fruit trees right try to break up the soil a little bit so it gets in there provide a mulch for it the idea is you want to get it going so that then you can leave it alone and you know it's taken care of it the, the watering you can get it down to maybe once a month if you do it right Mm -hmm. which is probably what's going on now you see but you know it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter so you're going to need a way to protect the soil and that's the ground cover okay there's lots and lots of different types of wonderful ground cover that you can grow from different kinds of herbs you know different kinds of mints will do it there's the, there's all types of uh, clovers that can be grown all kinds of really cool native plants that you can eat that or you know they're not they're not non-poisonous that you can grow that will eventually just reseed themselves. You, all you have to do is harvest it if you want to actually harvest the plants, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be the key. So I would, I would actually start taking, making some compost in the nearby area that's especially for these plants. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan.
See what I mean? Just find a spot not too far away, bring some stuff, make, start making a pile, let it cook, and then when it's done, put it out there. And do that maybe once a year or twice a year, you'll see that everything will do even better. And yeah, you want to prune the trees back. Uh, you want to, you want to uh, you know, minimize the pruning, you know, but you, you know, in the sense that if they, if the tree's doing really good, don't bother it, right? If, it's, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, right? Mm-hmm. Right? As, as, uh, as the, uh, do, you, you, do you know how to use a refractometer? No, I've never used one. Have you seen uh, any of my shows? No. No, but I read about, I read about it in the book. Well, well, fine. If you look at any of my, <laughs> I, I, I can't stand it anymore. Just answer our question. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that voice really changes. It's scary. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, I have I, I, uh, uh, some of my past shows. I do have a, a information on how to use the refractometer. So I would actually look up some of my recently past shows within the last month or so. I've been talking about a refractometer all the time, and it's really really cheap to get, and you can actually test the fruit because that would help you to see. Well, gee. It should be at 23, look, it's at 10. That will tell you, right, what's going on. But you can actually, don't need a refractometer. You can look at the trees and go, well, the fruit doesn't t- taste all that good, does it? Or does it? Some of it's really good, some of it's not so good. Right, so on the same tree or different trees? Different trees. Right, so that, that kind of tells you, right, so some trees are doing better than the other ones. The one that's not so good means it's missing something, the trace middle. So it start, that process is going to get worse unless you help it because it, if it ain't got a source of food, it's going to die off on you, right? It'll slowly, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, I would assume everybody needs the same thing. And that's why the spraying comes real good. You go out there late, at, you know, late in the afternoon and give them a good foliar spraying. That would be the immediate thing. I would not only spray the, the, the trees, but I would soak the soil with it because you, if you do the foliar spray, for example, compost tea, if you was to use compost tea and you made – your compost really good and rich with minerals and stuff like that and bacteria. Bingo. Well, so there's a uh, Pauline from New York on line one. So uh, hang on a second, uh, Casey. Let's see if we can bring Pauline Pauline on too. Hey, Pauline, you there? Yeah, I'm one of your members. You gave me a free membership and two books a couple of years ago. I oh, haven't hi. even gone to the website. I don't have a garden yet. Hi, Pauline. But What's I'm happening? Actually... What? What's happening? What can I do for you today? I'm calling because I want to plant inside my patio. I have a, an outdoor patio, an apartment building I live in. I live in a co-op, 16 floors up. Um, and right now, the balcony is so wrecked that I thought maybe I'll get permission to see if they'll let me grow a garden because on my balcony is the drain so that I could drain the water. I don't know if they'll let me. So uh, I'm like wondering, do you have any advice about that, or should I email that to you and for another you, show? You can grow uh, in containers. You know, you can. Uh, you, there are lots of different ways to grow on a balcony. Uh, you know, there are lots of different types of containers you yeah, can buy. Containers, but I don't yeah. want to do containers. So. How are you going to grow it? Is there soil up there? Well, there's. It's hot. It's on the southwest corner. It's very hot in that. Um, right. Do you have to grow balcony. it in something? Right now it's, uh, on your balcony, you have to grow in something. You, yeah, you need a container to grow it in, right? Yeah, well, right now, that's what I, if I grew it in containers, they would have no, I don't have to ask permission. But right. I really want to grow it like a raised garden bed. Type no, thing. you can't do a raised bed on the, on the balcony. That would okay. be, it would be really heavy to put the soil on there. It will cost a, a bench. Uh, you know, I believe me, I tried it once, and what happened was is that, uh, the the raised bed didn't drain the way it's supposed to, so it drained onto the balcony and damaged the balcony. Because you know the balcony, if you live in a condo, is not yours; it's a common area. Yeah, it's a co-op, so it's definitely yeah. not mine. That's why. Yeah, I have to yeah. Do so I would definitely just do uh, in containers. That if you put them on uh, on wheels, uh, you can get different sizes of containers. They'll do really fine. You can do a whole bunch of containers up there. I would ask them first: Is it okay for me to? do a garden on my balcony, I will use containers, and I'll say yes or no. They'll probably say, well, you can only have three plants or four plants, right, whatever the, the limit is, see? Right. The other thing is, if I were to use, I don't want to use plastic containers. Uh, do you advise to use terracotta or wood or anything that's not, um, that's 
that's not plastic at least. Yeah, what is the best bet? What is your best bet? There are lots of really nice, great wooden containers you can use. I like using those wine barrels, half of the, that they're cut in half, they're round, big enough to use. You can't really move them around, so once you place them, once you place okay. them, you know. I'm talking to you from the oh. street. I'm hardly hearing you. I'm going to listen to the show again. Okay. Whatever you said, I didn't get everything. But uh, I figured I'd give you a buzz and just to say hello. Because one mm. time I called in and nobody was calling. And that's how I got. You gave me two books, a free membership. I got everything that day. And not that I was <laughs> intending for that to happen. It just happened. You were just so yeah. generous to me. And I just have not gone into my into the, the library. Yeah. Bad girl. I Bad. have to have to use it. Bad girl. Bad girl. Well, at least you're listening to the show. Thank you. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you? Okay, you what's that? You know Gary No. Uh, I don't sure. I'm not sure. The name sounds familiar. He has Should a I? radio show called Progressive Radio Network. I'm going to send you an email. Okay. Has, I think he needs you on the show. To have, cool. He actually has one person coming on, but it's very occasional for an organic okay. gardener, but you know everything. Yeah, I know everything. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, I understand. Maybe you can simulcast it while you're doing BBS. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we can probably do that too. But I'm, I'm glad you called. If you have any questions, show right now on your spot, on your spot called Peace Talk Radio. It's a nice show, but they can move that from the last show, and I think it would be perfect. If I ever get to talk to Gary, no, I'm going to suggest uh, you. Thank you, sweetheart. There's thank you. Show I want to ask if you want to be on. Um, this is uh, somebody that's on BBS already. She's got her own radio station, Oneness Talk Radio. Do you know these people? No, I don't. Don knows them. Your cosmic music is perfect on there. Oh, thank you. You're listening to the music, too. That's great. It's coming up in a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you listen to it long enough, it makes you young. I'm, I'm, uh, the doctor says uh, I'm 18 now. <laughs> you look 18? You 18. Look 18 with the cosmic I'm 18. <laughs> So I was 71. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm 71 physically, but everything else says I'm 18. The, the, the doctor said, ah, you're 18 now. What you doing? Because my hair is turning black again, you know. And Andy, are you from, Andy, are you Puerto Rican? Are my you mother's from Puerto Rico. My dad's from Cuba. Oh, wow. Habla Espanol? Sí. I learned it in, I shouldn't say, how does it, they say learn. It's been a long time since I practiced. 20 years, I don't know, 40 years for Cal, I've been, since I was in high school. I was a 100% student with Spanish. You say that Puerto Rico? Really okay. Si tiene un, uh, 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 wait. My internet uh, connection is unstable. 26 años tiene un colombiano. Did you tape it? Babo liquid what? vinegar from China. <laughs> okay, okay, sweetie, I'm going to have to go soon, I okay? I'm going to let you go because I'm okay. sure people waiting. Bye. Well, maybe we're not, but I'm glad you called. Feel free to call me anytime, okay? Okay. I'll try to email you something in advance if I have any time. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So they, uh, they take bamboo, they start a fire, put the fire out and let it simmer. And then they run water through it. Bamboo, liquid vinegar. Absolutely amazing stuff. I'll talk to you about it sometime. That was a uh, bamboo vinegar. Yeah, the audio works. Uh, basically, what I did was is that uh, I had to get the show together. I only did part of the audio. My idea was to go back on and then fill the audio. But uh, I had this morning, so many different people kept calling and calling. And so I just have to, I can't, I can't turn everything off. I have to figure out a way to turn up the phone, just lock myself in here. So I got uh, delayed by an hour. So there's no audio. It, it, it runs, you see, it's very quiet. I figured I was going to talk over it, and also too, if I figured with, hey, J hey Jacob, you still there? I'm here. Right. So you know that basically, uh, Jacob may end up being a guest or a regular host on and off. Uh, this is his first time on here, you know. Uh, so welcome to the show, Jacob, and uh, please make it here. Huh? Oh, some things are not. I'm not going to get eaten up. <laughs> Nobody seems to want to eat the part. <laughs> I'm actually talking on this one here. You know, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that I have I put together here because you know it's really hard to uh, to learn how to do the mixture of the. Uh, uh, see, I don't want it to be totally uh, pre-recorded because the whole reason I do the show is to talk to people like you, Jacob. Right? That's right. 
right? And there's like this lady. And so uh, what I have to do is I'm, I'm thinking, I, and I'm doing a workshop. This, this is basically a workshop that we're doing now. But starting in September, uh, it's going to be a more formal workshop. I have more information. Uh, and, the, and the workshop is currently free. That means people can sign up. They have to register. And the way you register for the workshop is you have to register through the newsletter. You're not getting the newsletter, are you, Jacob? No, remember we talked about this. Right, so that means, that means that you didn't sign up because when you sign up, you no, get the I, newsletter. You, you, so that means that somehow the process didn't make, you didn't make it through the sign up. Maybe you signed up to receive the Playboy magazine of the Months Club. I don't know, but you, you didn't make it through my membership because otherwise you would get a, an email back saying, congratulations, blah, blah, this is a newsletter, yada, yada. So that means you didn't make it through somehow. So what we, I'll do is... Uh, I'll go out online, look for you. But I, I think I looked for you. I, I think you, you, didn't do, you didn't follow through. So maybe what we'll do is, remember, you're supposed to call me on Zoom. We can, we can share the screen, and I'll guide you through that process. Because once you join, you automatically get the newsletters. And the way people should email me is not by sending emails to andylopezinvisiblegardener.com like you did. Fortunately, you're already in my contacts, so I got you saved. Because if I can show you the screen, you'll see that I got 3,000 emails yesterday. 3,000 emails yesterday. And I was like, holy cow, I have to look for every, to each one to be able to pull them up. And after about 200, I just hit the delete button. Okay, that's it. Because if I left it alone for a week, it was like 30,000 emails. And I'm going, holy cow. And 99% of them are just junk. So, so you have to go through the West to the newsletter because the newsletter sends it from my from my server to me, which is all, it doesn't go, it knows who it is, it goes in a separate box. And then you can, you, you, you register for the workshop because the, what will happen is, is that um, when we do the workshop, only those register will be able to log in. Anybody can listen to it, right? But if you want to log in and ask questions, you have to be registered for the workshop. Not you so much, uh, Jacob, even though probably you should register just to get the feel how it's going on, but we have to fix you so that you can, so that you, you get to you actually get the newsletter. By the way, Jacob is working with me now. He's uh he's he's uh, going on learning the uh, the spraying process. He may end up being my spraying manager, and he also seems to be pretty interested in learning how to make compost. And I say learning because I don't know exactly what he's doing, uh, uh, the quality of his compost and other stuff. So I actually I actually got to get involved to a certain degree, which makes it difficult for me right now because I'm involved in so many different things. I can barely do anything at all but you'll be hearing more of Jacob and hopefully Jacob will follow through and he'll end up being uh, some type of host on the show so that people can you know I want other people's energies other than myself I are you there Jacob I'm here you're way too quiet otherwise you say I want my question answered <laughs> answer uh, my damn question yeah answer my damn question you know and De I, 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 again uh, everybody welcome Deborah back I would have loved it if Deborah was to call. Deborah, if you're listening, why aren't you? Don't you just, honey, why don't you just call me and say hi on the air? Say hi to everybody. We're just a happy family here. De Deborah uh, normally should have taken care of you. Deborah normally, I would have told her that you're going to be on and she was to make sure you're going to be on. And, you know, uh, it, when, we, when, you, when you're on next time as a host, she basically is going to promote the show. She promotes the guests. There's so many things going on BBS station here that I can't even begin to, uh, you know, make it work. She knows all that stuff. So she'll take care of the guests. She'll take care of, like you, you know, uh, she'll say, you know, she'll tell you what, who to, like you asked me, what to call. She'll tell you who to, where to call, what, when to call, make sure that you're going to call, that kind of stuff, right? Sounds good. Right. So, so you know, I'll be back again next week. And, you know, you're, you're welcome. The thing is, is that, see, I... I, I have to work out a, a format. So basically what I'm thinking of doing is that half the show will be taped, the other half will be live. Okay, so it'll say this is taped, and then the, this is live. The live means people can call. The only problem I'm having a lot is when I say live and nobody calls, I'm sitting here going, oh, well, I just, um, gee, gee. you know, la, da, da, da. What a lovely day, we're having day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So I, I, the only way I do it live is if I actually have somebody who has a, makes me a date, like you did, Jacob, to be on the show, then we'll do it live. Otherwise, it's just going to be recorded. So if you want to talk to me, you can you know, go to the website. There's a form called Inquiry. 
put in your name, your phone number. Hi, I have a question. I would like to be on your show. Deborah will get back to you and say, okay, these are the dates. When day do you, what day do you want to do it, et cetera, et cetera. It helps you through the whole process. Okay, so coming up in about two minutes, it's the Cosmic Spaceship. Now, uh, you have never heard my Cosmic Spaceship, have you, Jacob? I actually heard it when I first tried to hear a recording of the show, and I thought, why is there no one talking? This whole thing is just music. That's right, because it's just the Cosmic Spaceship. We were doing back-to-back. -back. I just told um, my engineer it's not a good idea because people have been contacting me. So I, so wait, I, I came on a gardening show, all I hear is music. Or somebody says, I want to hear music, but this is a gardening show. Because, you know, I have two shows here, and I had to stop the, sh the show get off and then get back on and get on a different station. See, like if you should stay here, you won't be able to hear it because it's going to be produced on the other, on station two, this is station one. But if you want to hear it, it, it's not open for people to plug in and listen to it because we don't talk, but you can listen to it if you want to or listen to it later. Just get the subscription on on sound, on sound um, YouTube, you know, you'll, be, you'll get to both shows. So we'll talk to you later today, okay, Jacob? Later on. Let's sounds go. good. Sounds good. Okay, everybody. So we're going to be finishing up in a few minutes. Uh, how much time we have left, Mr. Engineer? I guess we should stop it now. Okay, we only have one minute left. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, all right. So see you guys later now. I'm going to stop sharing, and I'll be right back for my show.